And it's a warm welcome along to you, as always. Chris Redden with you, United Kingdom Talk. One hour of some totally uninteresting... Com- well, it might be interesting today because it is the last of our email catch-up shows. I am hoping by the end of the show today to have completed all the backlog of millions and millions of emails that have poured in here into the Mirable studio in Royal Berkshire. I have fingers crossed, which means there's no time to talk about anything else. I'm sorry I'm not in the garden um, today. I thought we might be able to actually go out in the garden, but it's a bit windy, and now and again there's a shower. It's, 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 it's sunny spells, isn't it? Sunny spells and showers. That's what the weatherman says when they're not actually quite sure what the weather's going to be like, isn't it? Eh? Yes, it is. And, um, uh, oh, last night I spent a, a long time setting up the new computer and it's almost ready to go. Probably on the next show I will have transferred the video side of things onto the other computer. Will, will it make any difference to you? Probably. I don't know, actually. I, I have no idea. I'm hoping that I can make a bigger picture. Um, uh, not necessarily the size of the picture, um, but the uh, the quality of the picture. I'm hoping that we're going to improve that on the video side of things. Audio-wise, we we'll stick to my trusty old faithful computer named Chris One. Oh, yeah, all my computers have got names. There's Chris One, Two, Three... Well, there, there has been Chris's One, and the newest one is Chris Seven. The laptop is Chris Six. Do you give your computer names? It's all to do with the network. Don't ask me, dear. I'm not a computer expert. And we don't don't want to start talking about computers because Joy starts writing in with letters of complaint, don't you? Eh? Right, then straight to the emails. And if you want to join in on the show at all, please feel free to do so. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, uh, we finished the last show with half of Robert's email. Robert in Iceland, a regular correspondent to the show, aren't you, Robert? Nice to hear from you, sir. Um, And he was asking if we were having an effect on the climate, saying it's warm and sunny uh, when he wrote the email. Temperatures touching 25 degrees centigrade, and we are close to the Arctic Circle, Iceland, of course. Uh, Is Iceland green... I'm, I'm just going to show ignorance here, I'm afraid. Is Iceland Greenland? Or is that two different places? I'm not sure. How stupid am I? I, I well, I did get unclassified for geography, you know. Blah, blah. All the noises have started now. I, 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 I. I can't help it. You know I can't help it. Is Iceland Greenland? I'm really sorry to have to ask you that, um, Robert. I think it is, isn't it? Is Iceland Greenland... And is it called Greenland now, rather than Iceland? Is Iceland the old name? Let me know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Oh, I'm sneeze. Hang on. Oh, I'm sneezing. Oh, dear. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I know what it is. I've got to open the window. One second. It's a bit windy out here today. There's actually a lovely smell in this office at the moment of new computer. Do you know that smell when you take a when you take a, a computer out of the um, out of the box and the living room is smelling like that as well because I've left the but great big box game. Uh, it was yeah, it was actually yesterday morning. Hasn't taken me long at all to set Oh no, sorry, let me get to the email. Sorry, Ross. Ross is about to send another letter of complaint telling me I'm not getting on with the emails. Here it comes. Um, Robert was saying, are we running out of oil? No. What we are running out of is cheap oil. And he says, what we have is a planet with a a 40-a-day cigarette habit. And I completely understand what you're saying there. Robert, a while ago, read a book called The World Without Us. And it takes us from a point by which... I know I read this bit on the last show. I'm just coming back into it. You've got to link it up, you see. Because people might not have... I know it's true to say that not everyone watch is, watches every single show. Which kind of disappoints me a bit. I mean, I sit here for hours on end preparing these global television extravaganzas which are on par, I believe, with the Olympics opening in Beijing. Where, in fact, next week, we may even light a sparkler on air. I just don't care anymore. I just don't care. Maybe that's what we should do at the end of every show, have fireworks in the garden. What do you reckon? Is that a good idea? Yes. Yes. Um, 
He says, um, what I found interesting was the chapter on what things would still be around after nature had taken back the planet. Uh, if we all left, how long would the Earth take to get back to what it was? Not long at all, I don't believe. He says, want to guess on one of the big items to still be around? How about the Channel Tunnel? Yeah, I think you're right. The Channel Tunnel would still be there. A great read. Uh, and the name of the book uh, is called The World Without Us. OK, I might um, I might actually get that one. That actually looks quite good. Make it a little circle there on my um, on my bit of paper. I'm sorry, I'm scratching my ear. I was doing it last week at. Um, I was scratching my ear last week while I was doing the bingo. And uh, you remember that boy, that one who said I, w I was looking fat. Do you remember I told you about him a couple of shows ago? Oh, yes. Told me I was looking at why was I wearing fat short, shorts for fat people. It's the same one. He complained when I started scratching my ear that it reminded him of, it, of his dad doing it. Well, what can you do if you have an itchy ear, dear? There's nothing you can do. Um, let me see. Uh, one of the big things, the Channel Tunnel. He says, a great read, and that's one I recommend. Another is an audio book by Captain Kirk called Up To Now. I think you have the book. Yes, yes, and certainly do. It's in my bedroom, and I'm getting on with that. It's, it's a good read, actually. And in answer to what your listeners doing, what are they doing while they're listening to the show, I am walking the streets of... Oh, where am I going to say this? Ukuri... Oh, blimey, I can't say this. Uk... Ukuri... Oh, come on, if you're going to use names of foreign places or people, please can you write them as they as they should be said. This is spelt A-K-U-R-E-Y-R-I. -E Ukuri. <laughs> uh, it's walking the streets of Ukuri, uh, delivering the free newspapers and earning some pennies so that we can go on holiday. It doesn't pay a fortune, but I win by getting some exercise every day and getting paid to do it. So how about that as a money-saving idea? Yeah, it's a good idea to do that. Um, round here we get um, a couple of free newspapers. There's the Bracknell uh, Midweek News and there's, there's another one. I can't think what it's called. I think it's the Bracknell... Oh, I can't remember. But there's two. There's two free papers that uh, I get delivered here. Now, they used to be delivered by youngsters. I suppose 14, 15, 16 years old. I don't know how old they are. But we often found they would dump a load of papers in various different places, which, much to the annoyance of me, I hate rubbish. I absolutely hate rubbish. We had this programme on the other day. It was on Monday on the BBC One Panorama, uh, which, if you're in the UK, you can probably watch again on the BBC iPlayer, which is suddenly pouring down with rain. See, it's a good job I came in here. It's pouring down with rain outside there now. And um, they were saying how people now, in the UK, and they just chuck rubbish on the floor. They absolutely, they just throw the rubbish on it. You've seen it time and time again. And, you know, you're frightened to say anything to anyone in case they pull out a knife and stab you or something like that, are you? Am I right? And it's just horrendous. It really is. And when you're driving along the road and people just chuck the rubbish out the window, it's, 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 it's awful. I hate it. I go walk around the house two or three times a day and pick up loads of rubbish. I'm always doing... Well, not... No, that's a lie. Two or th not two or three times a day. Uh, maybe a couple of times a week, and I look for rubbish. Now, there isn't always some there, but occasionally you find the crisp packet or a sweet wrapper or a can or something. What really annoys me, there's a bloke, OK, who lives... I'm not going to say which one, obviously. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There were twelve houses here, and there's a bloke who does a lot of DIY... And he, I, I watch him. He keeps chucking rubbish into the communal area, which really annoys me. Why does he do it? I've seen him, you know, smoking a cigarette and flicks the cigarette out, and it's so annoying. And do you know what I found the other day? I know it came from him. I found a cooker hob, right, just chucked in the area. So I wait till he went out, OK, and I went in the communal area, which is it's like loads of bushes. You can't, to be honest, you can't see this stuff unless you look for it, right? So I went over there and I picked up that rubbish. I picked up this, this hob and I put it in his bin. So next time he opens his bin, he'll see that in there and he'll know someone has seen him. I'm sick to death of it. I've got a good mind to write to the council. So I know you, people chucking rubbish. And you see it outside the fast food shops. 
I mean, I'll give McDonald's its due. You often see people from McDonald's going around picking up the wrappers. But really, it's not their job to do it. The people who are buying the food shouldn't chuck it on the floor in the first place. Oh, I hate that. Rubbish all over the place. Um, so there we are. Uh, good to see that you're getting exercise there. Um, uh, but I was, was saying about the newspapers, the free newspaper deliver. We now have... Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not referring to you here, Robert. We now, I now spot quite a few elderly men delivering these free newspapers. And you usually see two or three of them, but probably mates and that. And they've got trolleys and they deliver them. And no longer do these things get dumped. So that's great. And, um, yeah, great that you're doing that, Robert. I know you won't be dumping rubbish all over the place. Uh, some fun this week. He says, ah, remember the Cod Wars of the 70s? Yes, I do remember those. The war between the UK and Iceland. Well, he says, I'm glad to report that I spent the week fishing for cod in the fjord and then waving my UK flag at a passing fishing boat. <laughs> Lovers or haters, you can't keep the Brits down. Oh, Britannia, Britannia rules the waves and, of course, the fields of Iceland. Heck, I hope this does not affect my Icelandic membership. <laughs> hey ho from Bob the Viking. And um, he also sent, just a minute now, he's also sent in this, this uh, other email. It shows you we are quite, we are getting quite current. We're getting there. We're getting to the end of these emails. Don't worry. Dear Chris and friends of United Kingdom Talk, uh, Robert in Iceland wishes to announce an important statement. I am looking for investors in my air guitar company. The slogan will be full of wind and stringless. From the cockpit of life, I look down upon the fair isle that is the United Kingdom and see only flowers. Well, look a bit closer and you'll see rubbish as well, I'm afraid. <laughs> Written by the guru of Reardon Town, Bob the Viking. Thank you, Bob. Lovely to hear from you, as always. Keep them coming in, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And also someone we haven't heard from away is Doug in Akeley. How are you, Doug? He says, hi, Chris. You were talking about cotton buds. Yes, I was saying to you, a couple of shows ago, never put them in your ear because you get... Um, I have had infections from uh, putting a cotton bud in and it, it scrapes the inside of your ear. You, you, the inside of your ear is apparently so delicate it's untrue. He says, yep, I've used them also for cleaning tape heads. Well, years ago, yeah, I mean, you used to have that cassette thing, you know, you open, open the drawer, didn't you, and get a little little cotton bud and clean the tape head. He said, but not much need for me to do that now. That was back when audio was fun. And blank tape selections keep getting smaller and smaller at the stores. But you can now get all kinds of blank CDRs and DVDs. Also like to use cotton buds to clean out the dust between the keys on my keyboard. Yeah, I've used them for that as well. Works good also around knobs and keys on electronic equipment. I know! I use it myself for those things. Last time I used, you know, I used two cotton buds to squeeze that style that was on my eye. <laughs> oh, it's horrible, isn't it? Uh, incidentally, those of you watching may notice that my eye is sorted. Now, which one is Oh, it's that one there. My eye has recovered. No more stuff. There's a little bit of a lump, actually. There is still a bit, little bit of a lump, but it's going down and no more itching or rubbing, so I'm quite pleased about that. It's horrible, isn't it? When you get something wrong in your eye, it's itching like mad. Oh, it's horrible. He said, now that I've got changed, uh, this is for uh, uh, Doug writes, now that I've got changed from second shift to first shift supervisor at work, I can't find as much time as I used to watch you. Also, I've been spending a lot of time at a lake that's in the same town as where I work. I love it there. Could not do it when I was working second. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? I like um, lakes and uh, uh, countryside, as you know. Years ago, uh, we went on a holiday. That's the Scouts, when I was in the Scouts, First Roehampton Scout Group. We went on a summer camp to the Lake District, uh, namely around the Windermere area. It was just fantastic. We went canoeing canoeing on this big lake and uh, oh, what, what a fantastic time we had that must be oh let me see that was, oh, got to be 29 30 years ago nearly yeah really I was actually I'm, I'm looking at the moment to hire a, a bungalow or a cottage for a week 
here in England. Um, because it's it's an easy holiday. But what I would, what I'm looking for is one with a um, a, a sea view, and it's not hard to find. What I want is is a little bungalow or cottage somewhere in the middle of nowhere on its own. We, we don't want one of those attached to the owner's house or anything like that. I want a little secluded, open the windows and there's the sea in front of me. But can I find one? They're not hard to find. You would have thought that some of these cottage or bungalow hire sites, and there are quite a few of them, have a search engine where you could put sea view in. And there isn't. And you have to literally go through all of them. I'm quite, quite liking Cornwall or somewhere like that because it's quite warm there, isn't it? Uh, and he sent me um, a link where you can see pictures of uh, the lake there. Thank you very much for those, which I have looked beautiful. Just beautiful. I'm on a week's vacation right now. Well, you'll be back now, won't you? So I have time to watch you at last. At last. You'll have to save them up. You can download the shows, you know. Just wanted to let you know I'm still checking in from time to time. Take care. Doug in Akeley. Thank you very much for that, sir. Always good to hear from you, sir. And remember, no cotton buds in ears, all right? Don't put them in your ears. Now, look who it is. It's our Monica in Spain. A viva España. Hello, Monica. Nice to hear from you, my love. Hi, Chris. I have eventually managed to catch up with your shows. Ever since you added the video option, I now prefer to, uh, now prefer to watch the show... Right, I'm, I'm tripping up on my words today. Am I talking too fast? Is that what it is? Do we need to slow down? Maybe we do. Ever since you added the video option, I prefer, prefer to watch the show rather than listen to it. Although occasionally I download your podcasts onto my MP3 player so that I can listen to you while I go to places. And you like to go to places, don't you, Monica? You are a globe trotter. A globe trotter. That's someone that likes to go around and see different things. Today, I have watched four shows. My God, how do you manage that, dear? I would do my brain in that was That's four hours. How can you sit there and watch four hours as me? What's that long film? Um, da, 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 da. Oh, I talked about this the other time, didn't I? Da, 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 da. It goes on and on, that, that film about... Um, oh, what is it now? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. A, there's a very long fit. Must be like watching one of those. Seeing the same geezer talk for four hours on end. That must be awful for you. Uh, she says, actually, a friend, also gay, she says, I have this gift for making gay friends, has told me you had already read the email. He's been listening to you for a few months now, maybe a year. And I think he's written something on your Facebook site. His name's Jose. Jose! Hundre! Jose! Hola! <laughs> Flamingos flying everywhere. It's a nice name, isn't it? Jose. Spelled, of course, J-O-S-E. See, I know that the J sounds like a H. Jose! Um, and Jose is from Zaragoza, another city where I used to live. And tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, he's coming to live in Madrid, near me. I am so happy. It's nice to be surrounded by friends, isn't it, eh? He's also an English teacher and just passed the same public exams I took two years ago when I moved to the Madrid area. As to my latest email, I told you I went to see Gemma. Gemma! I went to see Gemma in Madrid and we went shopping. We only, oh my God, I can't, I can't bear the thought of these women going shopping now. We only shopped for clothes. Oh dear. And she's amazing at finding bargains and proper sizes and getting the right stuff. I can't think of anything worse. Women going out and buying clothes. It does my brain in. My sister spends hours and hours looking at things and buying nothing. Are you the same? Are you? <laughs> Yeah. I told you what I was looking for. I told her what I was looking for. And like a Tasmanian devil, we have one that listens to the show, you know. Yeah, his name's Matthew. Matt, Matty the Tasmanian devil. He listens to the show. 
Like a Tasmanian devil, she, she got it. Fortunately, we didn't have much time because she was very convincing and had me buy a lot of things. Ha ha! If we did have more time, my bank account would now be in the red. Yes, watch out, my dear. Know your limit. Let me just clear my throat. These days, I have finally switched off and started enjoying my holidays. I am reading a lot and watching a lot of series down, downloads, including uh, Battlestar Galactica, or oh yes, Suko and her uh, husband like that, and Lost, the fourth seasons, Life on Mars, a UK series, Men in Trees and others. Men in Trees? What's all that about? Oh, I don't like the sound of that, dear. What dreadful programmes are you watching? Men in Trees? Never heard of that one. I'll, I should, let me just circle that. I'll just have to look at that. I shall have to look at that when uh, when we've um, <laughs> stopped the sh when we've finished our show, but I'm really looking forward to leaving for Italy and then to Edinburgh. Let uh, haha. Let me explain that. I fly to Rome first, and then spend some days with my mum and brother first. Oh, that's nice. Then with my cousin. Then with my father, as my parents have been separated now for years. It's a quick visit. Just six days, and it's just to see how they are, for I don't usually go to Rome in the summer. It's stifling hot, very humid, and being there is a bit of a torture. My mother is getting on in years and lives alone. She cannot hear very well. Uh, we had to buy her some very expensive hearing aids, yeah. And can't see that well, for she has a kind of degenerative illness in her eyes. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, um... Uh, Monica. Uh, my dad, well, he had a kind of stroke uh, a couple of years ago and it affected his speech, only a little fortunately, and his right hand. But he's doing fine for he's a very active person, mentally and physically. Yet lately he's been very ill and finally the doctors found out he has lung emphysema. Uh, he doesn't smoke, but it can sometimes be genetic. Oh, And the problem is he doesn't accept becoming old and wants to do the same thing he did 20 years ago. I think I'm the same, uh, to be honest, Monica. I certainly don't feel 45. I, f I still feel like I'm about 25. I really do. I mean, I'm, I'm more active than I used to be in my 20s. What with the swimming and the walking and um, all that business. Um, but how annoying is that, getting something like emphysema when you've never smoked and you've tried to look after your own body and yet... You get it. Shame. Uh, my, my dad had a stroke as well, actually, years ago. Of course, um, he's not with us now. But uh, I remember after he had that stroke and uh, we had trouble understand, understanding what he said afterwards. He kind of had to learn. He spoke differently after that. And he kind of had to learn how to speak again. Um... So she says, let's see what I find when I get there. Yeah, good luck with that uh, visit there. After the visit, I will come back to Spain for a few days and will almost immediately leave for my beloved Scotland. Oh, we've got some, have we got Scottish music? Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. We must have a little bit of Scottish, Scottish jingles there. I'm sure, I know we've got something here. Um, oh, maybe not. Hang on, is it, is it under? Oh, there it is. There, there we are. Scottish music in the background while we're doing this. Yeah. Here we go. She's off to Scotland. Let's do it. Oh, we love it. We'll leave that playing in the background, shall we? I'm talking about her visit to um, uh, Scotland. Let me see. Oh, let me put... I can't hear how loud I am now. I'll have to put my headphones on while I'm talking. That's better. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Oh, we love it. We love it. After this visit, as I say, you, I will come back to Skane for a few days and will almost immediately leave for my beloved Scotland together with my friend. We're going to spend only four days there, but I guess we'll make the most of this uh, short trip too. I love the Highlands. My heart's in the Highlands, as Scottish poet Robert Burns wrote. It's, it's a beautiful place. It really is a beautiful place, the Scottish Highlands, and scenery, of course. 
I will send you pictures when I get back and tell you what we did and saw and what the hotel was like. It's like a boutique hotel, decorated gothic style, all black. When my friend, you are my true love, will never meet again on the bonny bonny banks of Loch Lomond. When my, oh, can you, do you like the tunes? Do you like the tunes in the background? Let me see. Um, when my friend saw the photos of the hotel on the website, he asked me whether at night they provided a vampire as well. Oh, they bite into your neck when they, hum, hum, vampires and suck that blood out. I think it's going to be fun. Well, Chris, this email is getting long. Feel free to cut out as many bits as you like. Never cut out bits from emails, my darling. Only one last thing. The dishy guy, together with me in the picture I sent you recently, is Martin, a colleague of mine that is an English teacher in the same school of languages to where I work. Take care. I will keep watching your shows till I leave and will invariably have time to catch up when I come back from Italy and Scotland. Bye to all the United Kingdom Talk listeners in and outside Europe. It's nice to hear about your lives in other countries. Yes, it certainly is. We love emails coming in from all over the world. It's beautiful. P.S. I almost forgot you are not fat. I do think gay people have an obsession with that. Yeah, I certainly do. And I can tell most of my friends are gay. Only a couple of them don't like, don't bother at all about their image. Well, I don't think I do anymore. Let's just eat as many pasties as possible. That's what I say. And a little bit of Scottish music there to finish us off. Welcome along, boys and girls. This is Chris Reardon with you. If you've just switched on, logged in, clicked on or are listening on the radio, this is United Kingdom Talk. Uh, main website for the show is unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and there's also an email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. .co.uk. Chris at United Kingdom Talk .co.uk. And we love hearing from other people where they are. Quick introduction to tell me who you are, where you are. And that kind of starts off a correspondence because people do like to know what other people are up to because we're all a bit nosy, aren't we? We're a bit nosy. Right. Um, <clears throat> got to say hello to Matthew. This is Matty, who I mentioned a while ago. And, oh, it's pouring down with rain again. Matty, a Tasmanian devil, writes, Hello, my friend. Uh, I particularly enjoyed your show at your sister's house. Matt, Matty, Tasmanian devil, it made me laugh. Thanks for reading my emails. And he says, hello and welcome to Planet Life, ha Planet Earth. How is life in old granny land? What are you saying, Matty? Matty, the Tasmanian boy, he likes to mention my age and he's constantly referring to it. I don't know why that is. <laughs> Thank you for reading my emails on the show. It makes me laugh. I like to see your reaction of what you think of them. Uh, all I can do is laugh my head off. Have been reading books on the United Kingdom from the library. Very interesting books, as there are also pictures of England. A great website, and uh, anyone else might want to have a look at this, is www.picturesofengland.com. OK, picturesofengland.com. Or it might be, he says, or it might be .co.uk. Well, which one is it, dear? We need correct information. Can you look that up in future before you start giving me little address uh, URLs? Thank you. He says um, he is uh, planning to move to uh, the UK and has been reading about Britain and Europe in the future because I'm eligible to apply for citizenship there, as at the moment I'm saving because I will get there someday. People tell me, but so excited. Can't wait. Your sister has a nice house, a nice garden in Lincolnshire. Say hello to your friends and family from me. Love the Tasmanian devil. And he said, uh, your brown and white shirt you wore a, sh a couple of shows ago, I thought you were still in your pyjamas. I beg your pardon? Thought I was still in my pyjamas? These are expensive shirts, dear. Four or five pounds each. What are you suggesting? Dear me. <laughs> I thought it was pyjamas. <laughs> What else have we got here? He said, you had McDonald's the other day when you were in London, you bad boy. Yeah, only one. Only one tiny little trip to McDonald's. That was, uh, yeah, it was just after my um, my uncle's funeral, wasn't it? But it, but it, wasn't, it wasn't me on my own, you see. I, I take my sister and uh, my niece, or got itchy ear again, and my niece and little nephew to McDonald's. So surely one little, one little tiny trip to McDonald's can be accepted, can't it? Please, please allow me. 
Matty thinks McDonald's is a rip-off because here in Australia, the last time I went to McDonald's, they downsized the food. You sure about that? Oh, I wanted a large size and it looked like it was small and that it gets very disappointing like I was ripped off because you paid the large size but it came out to be a small size. Here in Australia, we have Red Rooster, Hungry Jacks. I've been to Hungry Jacks. I love the Australian, the, what are they called? Aussie Burger. Do you like Aussie Burger? Uh, Aussie Burgers are huge and they have beetroot and eggs on. Oh, they're lovely. I like an Aussie Burger. Hungry Jacks, KFC and definitely McDonald's. But at McDonald's, they should not have downsized the food. That makes it a rip-off waste of money. So me... I haven't been back to McDonald's in ages since I thought I had been diddled on a downsize food. Size does matter. From <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> From your friend Matty, the Tasmanian devil. Uh, and he's, he also thinks I'm a bit of a stirrer because at, at the funeral dinner, that's the, uh, the dinner that my uh, auntie Rini provided after my uncle's funeral you told your nephew that i'll give you 20 pounds if you go up and get me another meal when he did <laughs> so so matty thinks i'm a bit of a stirrer i think i am too matty thanks for the emails uh, staying in australia with someone we haven't heard from for quite some time actually cw in victoria and nice to hear from you cw good day chris it's chris from victoria australia here Sorry I wrote in, I haven't wrote to you in some time, but I've been quite busy. I've now moved house about 30 minutes away from my last one and also won a nine-day trip to Bangkok. So I've just got back from there and what a very strange and exciting city it is. So many motorbikes back and forth. I was hit by a driver's helmet. How did that happen? How did you get hit by a helmet? I'm not quite sure either. You'll have to tell me how, what, what you mean by that, because I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. I wasn't badly hurt, just a bit bruised. And lucky me, I win the trip during the monsoon season. <laughs> so a few, I hope you took an umbrella. So a few days I believed I would float away as I made my way down the small side streets with the trusty umbrella that the hotel gave me. I had a great chance to go to a tiger sanctuary about 90 minutes away from Bangkok. These tigers are so tame, it is just wonderful. There were even little pigs dressed as tigers in there with them. And I saw a golden retriever in a cage with a tiger as well. Oh, why is that then, I wonder? Why do they put... Um, why do they put pigs and uh, dogs in with the tigers as well? I'm not sure. You'll have to, you have to give me a bit more information there. I'm not, I'm not sure why they did that. Uh, or maybe maybe Susan, our resident tiger looker after her. Yes, Susan in America looks after tigers and uh, lions for a job. Uh, do you do that as well, Susan? Do they put little animals in with the um, with the tigers? Or, or maybe it's just the cubs. Is it just with the cubs that they play with? I don't know. I saw some blue liquid on the dog and they asked, I asked the tour guide what it was and I was told it was antibiotics where one of the tigers got a bit playful. I can tell you, mate, I wouldn't want that dog's life. <laughs> I don't think I would either. Oh, dear. So wonderful to be back home in the wonderful world of Oz where I got to catch up with eight of the ten or eight. Eight to ten of the shows. My brain hurts a bit now, but I needed my United Kingdom talk fix. I should think it does. How can you listen to so many shows at the same time? It's like Monica. She listen, listens to five hours worth of me. Blimey. Hope that you never run across another dodgy cup of, cup of tea again, matey. Cheers, Chris. Uh, Victoria in Australia. Well, I, I think um, I doubt that, actually. I, I would imagine I shall continue to run into dodgy cups of tea. Although, like I say, to get a dodgy cup of tea in the north of England really is unbelievable. They, they did not know how to make tea. You can understand when you go to, um, I hate to say it, but most of Europe, Australia, you get a proper cup of tea in Australia. Absolutely, you know how to make the tea there. But in most of Europe, America... Places like that, they they haven't been taught how to make tea properly. So there we are. 
Um, first email from Kieran. Kieran, who's in London, has recently become a viewer to the show. And he says, hello, Chris. Hope you're well. The last guy I do know, Kieran, uh, I used to work with him. Uh, no, I used to. He used to come along to Bingay at the Golden Lion on Monday nights. And I also worked with him about about four years ago at a place in the east, east end of London called The Black Horse. And he says, hello, Chris. Hope you're well. The last show made me roll around with laughter. Can't wait for Bingay to start again at the uh, place in um, King's Cross. We have got another place in King's Cross uh, called Central Station where we're going to be doing Bingay on Wednesday. At the moment, of course, um, Bingay is exclusive for the month of August to West Five. Now, that is in Pope's Lane in Ealing on Tuesday nights, OK? 8 p.m. to 12 midnight. Anyone, anyone there, incidentally, there might be people there who have been to Bingate and are now watching this show. So a very warm welcome to you, or indeed listening to the show, OK, if you've played Bingate. But at the moment, we are exclusive at the moment. Bingate is exclusive at the moment to West Five, Pope's Lane, Ealing, London, on on Tuesday nights between 8pm and 12 midnight, all right? They have a lovely garden out in the back there as well. Really nice, one of the best pub gardens I've ever come across, them, I have to say. Uh, that one, and of course the one in um, uh, the steam coach in Hemel Hempstead. He's got, oh, he spends a lot of money on that garden. His mother makes all the hanging baskets, and it's really beautiful. If you're ever in the Hemel Hempstead area, uh, doing the daytime on a nice day, have a visit to the steam coach. Okay, uh, as I say, it's in Hemel Hempstead in Boxmoor, and it's on St John. The steam coach, St John's Road. Boxmore, Hemel Hempstead, and just go out the back into the garden area. It's beautiful. They've got a small garden out the front and a larger garden at the back. And he's got like a little pond and flowers and beautiful hanging baskets. It's really nice there. That'd be a nice day out for you. If you ever want to visit, yeah, if you ever want to visit a typical country English pub, that's where you want to go. The Steamcoach, St. John's Road, Boxmore, Hemel Hempstead, all right? I'm not getting any money for saying that. I'm just passing on what would be a nice experience for you. Uh, the, his mother's name, she's the landlady, her name's Sylvie. And she's always rushing around like a blue, like a blue fly. I nearly said something else. Then. She just, just rushes all the time. Rush, rush, rush all the time. I don't know why. Um, Kieran says, I hope all the regulars will still come down to the new night. Um, so that's nice. Caroline, his friend, is back in England, so I'll have to drag her down to see you soon. All right. Thank you very much for that one, uh, Kieran. Nice to hear from you, sir. Thank you for emailing into the programme. Now, let me just... Um, oops, sorry, I just knocked the microphone. Did, you, did that hurt your ears? Let me just chuck away a couple of emails that I've read. Otherwise, I'll, um, I'll... I'll accidentally read them out again. You know what I'm like. Terrible. Right, done that. Now, I want to keep... Where's the other one? Uh, I wanted to keep one here because I want to look at something later on. What was it? Oh, the world, the world without us. That book. I want to look that up. I might order that from a, from one of the bookstores online. Um, here we go. Look who it is. It's young Adam. Good evening, Adam. Also known as DJ Demon. Now he's in London as well, and I didn't know that he was a regular viewer to the show. So there we are. And uh, Adam says, "Hello, Chris. How are you?" Uh, right. Can you set your podcasts so that they automatically download to people's iTunes if they subscribe to it? Is it possible? Because I am subscribed to a few podcasts and they just appear in my podcast icon on iTunes after they have automatically downloaded. Right. Now, we were talking about this on the last show. And um, I know what you mean. Uh, I was saying if you open up the actual iTunes software, right, click on the podcast section and search for United Kingdom Talk and United Kingdom Talk Video, both of those will now come up and you can subscribe to them within the iTunes software itself. Also, since I received this email, I took that on board and you will now find... And I, I did mention this in the last show, but as you've uh, written in, I'll, I'll mention to you again. Uh, you will also now find on the main United Kingdom Talk website, that is unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, you will now also find an iTunes subscribe button there 
Thank you very much to Joe from americantalkusa.com for providing me with a little um, uh, code that I had to put in there. You will now find an iTunes button on the left-hand side underneath all the dates. OK, so once again, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk on the left hand side, scroll down below the gates and there you will see, I think, an RSS button. Is it an RRS or something like that? And also an iTunes button. And you can subscribe to the radio show. So not the video. You can subscribe to the radio show from there. I have also now um, emailed Joe and asked him if it's also possible to have a little button for the video side of things as well. All right, Adam. So thank you very much for that. I hope you're well. Got lots of people after you at the moment, as always, haven't you? Yes. No one for me in this life, as I've mentioned. So I don't like to keep mentioning it. <laughs> now, now let me see. Is this the last email? Oh, no, there's, there's another one here. Hang on, let me just... We are about to... Oh, hang on a minute. One minute, one minute, one minute. Oh, no, hang on. I want, to, I want to get through all these emails on the show today. Right, they may not come up in order now. We're going to do it. We are actually going to clear the backlog. I'm sure, I, I think we are anyway. Let's have a look at the time. Yeah, I think we might. We might just do this. Hello to Suko. Hello, Suko, my darling, who says, uh, Hi, Chris. I'm off to a board meeting for the Chinese Centre on Long Island. The local TV news station will be there to interview the board about the Beijing Olympics. Oh, are you going to a TV station? Here's your chance, Suko. Here's your chance. Get me a job on that little local TV station doing a little show like this nightly. Are you going to be able to do that for me? Because you do know you are now in competition with Catherine to see... Does anyone else want to join in that competition at all? To see... Oh, you've got, you've got to try, haven't you? To see if either of you can get me a job on a... TV station or a radio station near you. Now, I did actually put a little on, you know, on Facebook. I am on Facebook. If you want to add me, it's Chris Reardon London. And one of the groups I'm on there is to do with radio programmes and that sort of thing. I did put a note because it's bound to be people on there who could help, isn't there? I did put a note on there saying um, to people, if anyone can assist me in kind of taking this show a little bit further, perhaps to a wider audience, then if anyone could advise me, Please do so. But I haven't heard anything back from them yet. But who's it, is it going to be you, Suko, or Catherine, who manages to get the job for me? That's the question. I mean, I know, Suko, if you don't really love me and, and you're too busy to go about doing that thing, I do understand. I do understand. I know you've got a family and that, which means probably Catherine will win. Oh, well. Similarly, Catherine, if you're too busy... I know. I, I, I will understand. Then Suko will probably win. Not that I'm saying it's a competition. <laughs> I know the words to say. I know the words to say. <laughs> anyway, uh, she says, the local TV news station will be there to interview the board about the Beijing Olympics. Got to doll myself up for the camera. It's pretty hopeless, though. I'm not the natural beauty you are. You are having a laugh. Suko, you are beautiful. What was that song? Was it by Christine Aguilera? You are beautiful. Oh, that, no, 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 that's not it. No, I remember that. There was one called Beautiful, wasn't it? And do you remember that one? I looked into your eyes and now you've taken over because it's beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. I don't need love affairs anymore. Suko, you are beautiful. Otherwise, Jerry wouldn't have married you, would he, dear? He wouldn't have married a minger, my love. <laughs> I keep in touch with Chris and Jerry. Chris um, hasn't been too well, but he seems to be doing quite better at the moment. He was very helpful to me when I had to interview a rock band on a recent local radio show. Yeah, Chris, I hope you're doing it a little bit better now. I gather you had a couple of little problems, so I do hope you're much better. And, of course, uh, your good wife, Jerry, who I haven't heard from you for a while, so I was a little bit concerned. So I did uh, email Suko, and she says she's in contact with you, so I'm glad about that. Um, so that's it. Have fun with the new computer. I know setting up new computers can be a daunting task. Well, it's time for my clothes. Goodbye for now. Well, Suko, yeah. I mean, it. to be honest, 
this computer, the new computer, hasn't been hard at all to set up. Now, whether it's because I've now set up a few over, over my time, I've set up a few computers, or whether they are now just genuinely easier to set up. I've had hardly a problem with this one at all, except um, when I first switched it on, it was making a constant bleeping sound. Beep, 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 beep. I thought, oh, here we go. You know, they've sent me out a dodgy computer here. And, but after a few hours investigation, because if, if you hit the, this was when you were booting up. Yeah, technical people. See if you can see if you, I tell you what, let's let's see if you can work out what it was. I won't tell you what it was. Technical people, see if you can work out this, right? So, new computer in place, monitor I'm sharing with um the computer I'm using now to make this show. I've got one of those switches. Now what are they? Is it a K I think it's called a KVM switch where um the keyboard and the screen and the mouse are shared between the two computers. Now, unfortunately, I can't share the computer and the keyboard on the new computer with this one because that's all it's all USB. And on the old computer, they're the little round plugs, you know, the, the green and purple plugs. But I can share the computer monitor. So I set that up to share the monitor with the two computers because I didn't order a new monitor for that one. OK, so push the start button and it starts starting up and then I get that continual little bleep noise. Beep, 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 And I thought, oh, no, what's that? There's something wrong with it. Anyway, uh, to clear it, I simply hit the escape button on the keyboard. OK, that's how I cleared the problem. Things started up and everything seemed to work reasonably well. And that's it, really. What was the only problem? But every time, because, of course, when you start a new computer, when you set up a new computer, you have to go online immediately, put your um, uh, virus stuff on there. Even the first thing you do, put the virus stuff on there and your uh, firewall. And then go to Microsoft and start doing all the downloads and putting your new software. But every, and of course, you have to do lots of restarts. But every time I restarted, I thought that's not right. Hit the escape button, it would stop and carry on. Technical guys, here's something for you to try out. Now, I have fixed the problem now. All on my little own. All on my own. Well, near, near enough on my own. Um, do you know what the problem is? Can anyone guess what it was? OK, once again, start the new computer. Within a few seconds of it starting, beep, 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 beep. To clear the alarm, I hit the escape button on its keyboard and then it carried on to normal boot. What do you think the problem was? Anyone guess? Go and have a guess. Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, um, let's say hello to... Oh, it's another one from Matthew, the Tasmanian devil. He says, did I tell you it was my dad's birthday on Saturday the 9th of August? No, you didn't. Does He He doesn't watch the show, though, does he? So is it, it's a bit pointless singing him happy birthday, really, is it? Does he watch the show? Shall I sing it just in case? Do, do, eh? Well, yeah, I can't... I tell you what, if, if he does watch the show, let me know and then tell me his name and I'll sing happy birthday to him, OK? Uh, we had apricot chicken for dinner. That's how, What is that, apricot chicken? Is it just chicken stuffed with apricots or something like that? Well, it sounds quite nice, that. And he got a graphics card for his computer uh, for his birthday and had some cake from the bakery and cheesecake. And me been watching the Beijing Olympics racing cycling. Uh, cycle racing is my favourite. Yeah, it's good, that is. Oh, I like, che oh, I like cheesecake. Oh, my friend, um, Matt, in London, no known as Ratch, who runs that pub I work at, uh, he had che cheesecake. Last time we went up to uh, Ed's Diner in Soho. Right, hello, it's it's Ross again, our resident complainer. Ross likes to moan a lot. Great show uh, today. I was shouting and shouting David Tennant when you were talking about Dr. Yeah, I couldn't, his name dropped out of my mind for some reason. 
Sorry I couldn't speak long last, mate, on the phone, because uh, I rang, I, I did ring up Ross. I, I rang up Ross in Norwich. As we had the taxi turning up, uh, him and his girlfriend were going out, or so we thought. We booked it two days ago for 8pm, and it went to our friend's house. They live at number 21, but he went to number one at 8 o'clock. Of course, there was no one home, as it was the wrong house. So rather than calling base and getting a phone number to ring the customer my friends and us, to check the number, he went to do another pickup. After 20 minutes, we rang the company to say, where is he? They said he was there, but you were not at home. We checked the door number and they sent another taxi and apologised. And guess what time the taxi? 8.40. 40 minutes late! My girlfriend's Donna had her friend Jenny waiting in the bar in the city for 40 minutes by herself. Poor thing thing. Why did, did she get chatted up in that time? Eh? I don't seem to get chatted up in bars. I don't know why that is. Never, never really have done. Honestly, I don't, let me, the bars I've been in, in my life, I've hardly ever been chatted up. Why is that? Are people scared, do you think? Is it because, is it because of the noises that I do while I'm sitting, standing there on my own? Do you think they're scared of that? <laughs> Why didn't he just call us to check the address was right? That's what I have to do. Yeah, because uh, he does, uh, uh, Ross does delivering for a company. We don't just ring the doorbell and go. By the time we got to the pub, one out of three hours was already up. Oh, I just say you already lost half your night. Good job we hadn't booked a restaurant. What a liberty, Chris. Do you think some taxi drivers are the biggest idiots in the world as they keep you waiting and waiting with no courtesy call, courtesy call to say, sorry, I'm running late or sorry, I think I went to the wrong door? Yes, I do. It's rudeness and they're not cheap, are they? Getting a taxi isn't exactly cheap. It's not hard to pick up the phone. I think the service in this rubbish country has gone down. Maybe a good topic for you there, Chrissy Babe. Rant over. Thank you, Ross. Nice to hear from you, sir. Yes, um... Well, Ross, I don't really have much experience on minicabs or taxis. I have always taken buses. I refuse, point blank, to spend a small fortune just because... I'm too lazy to wait for a bus. I have always taken buses everywhere when I've gone out. Um, uh, of course, I don't drink either, so that helps as well. I drive most of the time. Another another uh, uh, email here from Matt, the Tasmanian devil. I know, Chris, because you know I do have a little sleep in the afternoon. I know why you sleep a lot in the afternoon, Chris. You want to know why? OK, here it goes. It's a sign of old age. From Matty. You know, you can go off people, Matt. You really can go off, people. <laughs> I've actually slept in the afternoon since I was 17 or 18 years old. I've always had a little sleep in the afternoon. It's true. Matt also says, um, oh, we've done the uh, we've done the birthday wishes uh, to your dad. You'll have to tell me if you want me to sing happy birthday to your dad. I'll be glad to do that. OK, my darling. And here we go. It's the last email that's been waiting. Now, this email, I'll tell you how, how bang up to date we are now. This email came in on the 10th of August. We are up to date. It has taken three weeks to get to this point. I'm so pleased. I'm completely and totally now out of email. So feel free to send in as many as you like, my darlings, OK? Chris at United... I'm so pleased with myself. Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Ross has got a sigh of relief as well. I can, and I'll tell you what, Ross, I'll have to read it quickly, otherwise we'll run out of time again. Uh, he says, uh, on the subject of Orlando, once again, this one's from Robert in Iceland, who says, Hi, Chris, thank you for featuring my request on the Saturday edition of your show. Yeah, I haven't had any replies for that yet. Um, let me ask again, uh, my kind friends, especially those of you in Florida, uh, Robert wants to hire a pushchair. I think it's a pushchair buggy type thing for a child in Florida when he goes there for a couple of weeks um, in the future. Is that possible to do that in Florida? And where would he go to do such a thing? All right. 
He says, I did so love the English lesson you gave. And in my... Yes, because I was correcting the email. There were a couple of little faults in the email. And in my defence, I should claim that I could not find my glasses and that I suffer from a medical condition called stu... What is it? <laughs> Stupendous or ignoramuses. You choose, smarty pants. <laughs> Talking of bad eyes, I have to say I like the way you've 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 sent the email in big font. Do you mind? Can I request that people who send emails can? Do you mind? Can you do it in slightly larger font because my eyes were a little bit like that as well now. Uh, you mentioned that you could rent strollers from Disney and, for that matter, from SeaWorld. Yes, I, I do know that for a fact. Yes, I know this to be true, but it is quite expensive. I am looking for a two-person person stroller. Like you, I've been to the Orlando area many times over the years, but this will be the first time with my family. I did smile when you recalled the time you had a run-in and not a check-in with the Ryanair person. And for the record, I'm not going to tell you for which airline I flew for. Oh, no, it wasn't them, was it? <laughs> but, it was, oh, yeah, but it was not them or any other budget airline. I do hope not, dear. We can't be working for budget airlines. Where will it all end, dear? Proper airlines you want to be on. I do love croissants, though, and I go weak at the knees when, a f when faced with a French tart covered in whipped cream. Uh, oh, we'll move on quickly from that, I think. And, oh my, in, in ending this letter from the North today, I should like to introduce you some Icelandic words, or in this case, bless, or in this case, word. Bless equals bye, and so bless, bless is bye-bye. So bless, bless to you, Bob the Viking, and time for me to go. Bye-bye from me. We are through the emails. They're done. Hooray. Send one in. Otherwise, I'll have nothing to talk about, OK? Uh, the email address of the show, I've got plenty to talk about, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks very much for watching and listening. I'll see you on the next show. For myself, Chris Reardon, bye-bye now.